Dear colleagues, dear friends, thank you so much for inviting me to this important event. I must say that it's quite a daunting task to draw some concluding remarks after such a powerful conference. And I'd like to thank the Sabanshi Foundation, not only for inviting me, but also for putting together such an inspiring group of people to discuss the role of philanthropy in the post-pandemic world. My name is Elfine Moranis. I am the CEO of the European Foundation Center and also the incoming CEO of Philea, Philanthropy Europe Association, which is an organization that converges EFC and Daphne together. And I'll be saying a few words about that at the end of my talk. Let me, however, start by sharing some of the learnings captured from our work in studying and supporting foundations and other philanthropic organizations active around Europe and having a close look at how these organizations operated in the course of the ongoing crisis. So at risk of stating the obvious, we know that the challenges faced by our societies today are just too vast and too complex to be dealt with by one nation or one sector alone. And in this context, it's very clear that philanthropy has a humble but relevant and unique role to play. To understand the responses of philanthropy in the face of this crisis, EFC, <clears throat> now philanthropy, now, e now philia, undertook regular monitoring initiatives among its 250 members, philanthropic organizations. And I'd like to share findings from two pieces of research um, that really indicate the immediate response of philanthropy to the crisis. The first research was launched immediately as the crisis broke, and it included a survey with 100 organizations from 23 countries um, between March and June 2020, so immediately as the crisis broke. A second, the most more recent piece of research was undertaken earlier this year through in-depth interviews with members of our thematic networks. And conclusions from both uh, pieces of research really pointed to the importance um, of collaboration as a way of dealing with the crisis for philanthropy. So it's important to understand that every foundation responded in its own way, in line with the diversity of the sector, but that collaboration was very much at the heart of those diverse responses. First, it included collaboration within foundations. We see that foundations responded by connecting different programmatic areas to more effectively tackle cross-cutting and intersectional issues. And that was referred to also by previous speakers in terms of the importance of new approaches and new ways of looking at challenges. And for some foundations, we saw that this included a new way of working with the SDGs as a framework to understand and connect the dots within their own organization. A second type of collaboration that really emerged more rapidly was collaboration between the foundations themselves. And we saw foundations accelerating synergies and creating pooled funds really to have a greater impact together. There was also an increase across Europe of collaboration between foundations and authorities at the different levels. And last but not least, a very important type of collaboration that increased in the course of the pandemic and immediately after the pandemic broke was the collaboration between foundations and their grantees. Many members responded to the crisis by operating with greater trust and by increasing unrestricted and core support. To give you some examples, in the arts and culture field, we saw that foundations decided to continue funding their grantees, despite the fact that all performances were stopped. Um, we also saw that foundations decided to reallocate funds to cover a core cost rather than the project cost that they had been intended to because the projects couldn't be continued um, in times of lockdown. Many foundations decided to operate with more flexibility and we saw from research undertaking in Germany that this flexibility was also received very positively by the grantees. So in addition to this um, research on the response to the pandemic, a couple of weeks ago, ahead of the last EFC annual conference, our next annual conference will be a Philea annual conference, we decided to go back to our members and ask them a little bit about their views on the future of philanthropy. As we emerge from the immediate response to the crisis, what lies ahead for us? And we received responses from a total of 321 organizations, from which we learned that foundations are deeply concerned with the funding gaps that emerge funding gaps on the one hand 
um, relating to the fact that half of the globe still has an uphill battle when it comes to vaccinating its population. And that challenge uh, led foundations to want to increasingly also invest and think about um, international work that they may be conducting towards the future. Other uh, challenges related to funding gaps in specific fields, and one of them that was mentioned explicitly was the field of gender, which saw a decrease of funding or a perceived decrease of funding um, in terms of being a priority due to emergency responses. Now, foundations are also worried that if we don't do anything, if we don't use this opportunity to change, things would just go back to normal and we would miss out on the opportunity to reflect upon our contribution and upon our role. But beyond the challenges um, that foundations refer to, many members also highlight that with crisis actually comes opportunity. They stress that there is a momentum for us to build on, to reset the system, to renew foundation practices and look at issues through an intersectional lens, to become more engaging, more vocal, more inclusive, more visible, more responsive and more collaborative. For these changes to be sustained, I believe philanthropic organizations also increasingly acknowledge that it requires changes in organizational culture and perhaps also in leadership style. We've seen an emphasis on increasing flexibility as a mindset for foundation leaders. Foundation leaders are increasingly asked to see opportunity in crisis, to understand what that bizarre and complex new normal will look like. They are increasingly confronted with the need to take care of their staff and also, importantly, to live up to the commitments of the sector in terms of diversity, equity and inclusion. Of course, these changes within foundations also occur against the larger backdrop of changes within the broad philanthropic sector. And increasingly, we see different and new forms of giving around the world. And it will be a question for philanthropic organizations, for foundations who've operated in this um, mindset over the past years to adapt to that and to think about what it means for them. So according to research, global philanthropy, uh, global philanthropic giving rather, in all its forms, topped to 660 billion euro, which is the highest amount ever noted in 2020. Um, also relevant is that foundations giving in particular has been growing fast over the past five years with an increase of 50%. Foundations are also increasingly expanding their toolbox and looking at impact investment, both for the investment side and the grant making side. And a growing number of philanthropic organizations is interested in using their grant making or their operational support to help social businesses, to help green businesses. They want to give them financial support, loans, grants, but also help them with operational activities such as developing skills or improving their processes. Now, being quite new to the sector myself, I find it nothing short of inspiring to see how philanthropy responded to the crisis at all levels as part of a much needed wave of solidarity. There was a rapid growth, for instance, of community philanthropy in Central and Eastern Europe. The pandemic in Central and Eastern Europe was also a breakthrough moment to start giving for 15% of the citizens and almost 50% started volunteering more. With all of this change, both in the broader philanthropic landscape and within foundation, it will of course not come as a surprise that we too, as philanthropy infrastructure organizations, are evolving. And I'm pleased to hear we say a few words about the beginning, the launch of a converged organization between the European Foundation Center and Daphne, its partner. Philia brings together today 250 of the strongest foundations in Europe, including the Sabanchi Foundation in Turkey. And it brings also the national associations, which together have access and represent and are the voice of 10,000 foundations across Europe. And we believe that by bringing together those national associations and the foundations themselves, we will be able to be a better representative for the sector. Filia aims to provide opportunities for its members and its stakeholders to learn, to build knowledge, to connect. We want to tell the story of philanthropy in an engaging way, and we believe it's important for us to anticipate trends. I'm motivated by the words of Margaret Meads that a small group of people a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can actually change the world. We believe that Filia will allow to better harness the immense and multidimensional potential of philanthropy. And this at the time when the world really needs philanthropy to be at its best. 
So let me perhaps end by referring to some of the inspiration we drew from a speech given earlier this week by Michael O'Flaherty. Michael O'Flaherty is the director of the EU Fundamental Rights Agency, and he joined us in celebrating the birth of Philia. In his closing remarks, he advised us to do what we do with hope. And he said that we needed to do what we do with hope, not as an abstract value, but as an evidence-based principle, as guided by the astonishing ability that humankind can actually do good. And to me, philanthropy is a story of hope. And I very much look forward to continuing that story of hope with all of you. Thank you again for inviting me to your event, and I wish you the very best. Thank you.